I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Jason. And we are father. And son. <laughs> and Jason, what are we talking about today? We're talking about the tick. We're doing a TV show and it's not lost. Isn't that exciting? I bet that's exciting for some people that don't care about lost. Yep, because we haven't done any TV shows except for Lost. Yeah, so far. But we're not going to be doing multiple episodes on The Tick. We're going to do the entire series in just this one show because The Tick had, uh, what, 36 episodes, 34, 36 episodes and over three seasons. And uh, we just got finished watching through it. We were watching this uh, with my kids during lunchtime every day. And we just got knocked out about a week ago and decided we should make this the next topic for father and son. So Jason's going to uh, take us through uh, his experience watching the show, his favorite things, his least favorite things, just like we usually do on the show. And it's going to be a lot of fun to chat about. We're going to do some trivia, Jason. Mm -hmm. I wrote down some trivia. For, I wrote down some hard ones. Oh, They're not no. all hard, but we'll see what you know about the show. It's gonna be it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. So years ago, uh, when I first got started on Geekvolution, uh, the Jeff and I, um, you know, the Jeff, yep. Jeff's my stepdad. That was back when he was just calling himself Jeff. Now he's got that cool article adjective. He's the Jeff. <laughs> Did and that start with the monkey? No, I don't think that's anything to do with. Maybe I'm not sure how that came about. Why you just. Uh, I, I think that that started back in maybe Harry Potter discussions. Mm. He started calling himself the Jeff, but I don't remember. Or maybe it was Pixar. I, I, I forget. But anyway, uh, and that I've heard from a few people that that's the video that got some people watching the channel in the first place. Because uh, there's not a whole lot of tick content on uh, YouTube, and even these days. And when you when you uh, you know search for the tick, a lot of the content that comes up is my stuff because I've done you know tick content all through the years. Uh, I've got got a couple of rewinds on tick things. And I've uh, got my collection video and you know, all kinds of stuff. And so it's, it, it's exciting today, Jason, to get back to this topic because, of course, the tick's one of my favorite things. And I've been wanting to do a regular show on this for a long time, which Jeff and I have been, um, the Jeff and I have been threatening to do for a really long time. And uh, the COVID kind of made that difficult this year, but we're still planning on eventually getting to that. Uh, but anyway, and so uh, that's how Dan's News found the channel. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Uh, I guess. He knew about the tick. I guess he was just seeking out a tick. Yeah, yeah. He was he was a uh, casual fan of the cartoon show, and he, mm. he and I uh, talk about tick and quote tick quite a bit uh, with each other. But uh, so anyway, um, Cause, yeah. Uh, people know kind of your thoughts about this show. Yeah, exactly. This is yet another one of those things where uh, I have spoken somewhat at length about this, and so we're gonna filter this. Um, or through your lens, uh, first impressions. Now, this is not Jason uh, going into a thing that he knew nothing about, because I've shown you a few episodes over the years here and there. Um, so let's start there. Uh, what were your um, what were your favorite episodes before you got into the show? Like, like, what, or what were the episodes that you really remembered? Um. Well, recently before that, I saw the big nothing. Um, and... That's the episode where Tick gets abducted by space aliens, and there's a race that looks, uh, all just like Arthur. Or, or they all have Arthur, uh, moth suits. Mm-hmm. And, um, another one that I remembered was, like, I don't, I don't remember, like, last time I watched it before I, uh, saw it again. Yeah. Um, was the Thrakerzog episode. Um... Uncommon Cold. Yeah. I don't Which remember. is one of my favorites. Yeah. I don't remember when I saw that first or last before. That's one of the three or four I tend to show people a lot. Because, uh, of course, I love Thracker Zog. Uh, I, I love the, particularly the, uh, the uh, Must You Drink Straight Out of the Milk Carton speech. And we also show Big Nothing uh, as a lot of people's first episode when we have people over. We, we, sh we show Take a Lot <laughs> when people come over to the house. Uh, partly because it's uh, one of my and Sarah's favorite things, and partly because uh, they're short. I mean, every Tick show, there's three Tick shows now, and they're all half-hour episodes. It's really easy to plop people down and show it to them. Uh, had you seen The Tick versus The Tick yet before we did this watch through? Yes. I, so... That's the one with Barry and the Comic Club. So, the thing about that was, um, I remember the first time I saw that because I remember you kept saying um that 
one of the lines. Oh, that, yeah, because I'll frequently say, uh, Barry, you're going to have to start making some sense. Yeah, and I didn't know what that was. Like, J like J Jason, will, Jason will say, like, a non sequitur or something, and I'll be like, Barry, you're going to have to start making some sense. And, then, and that's the thing Jeff used to do to me in high school. Oh really? Yes, that's that's part of where that came from. <laughs> he, he, I would I would say something that confused Jeff, and he'd go, "Barry, you're gonna have to start yeah, making he, some sense." <laughs> um, but I I didn't know like what that meant. Um, at first I thought it was something from like the Flash. <laughs> and then, <laughs> oh sure, yeah, because Barry Allen. And then I saw that episode, and I was like. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know that. This show is uh, one of the best things to arm yourself with for quotes for any situation. Uh, I feel like it has that in common with '60s Batman and uh, to to uh, some some degree Star Trek. Uh, for me, the the big difference, of course, is that uh, you'll find more people that will know what you're talking about when you quote Star Trek than you will the Tick, uh, because Tick quotes come up with me all the time, and uh, I can't help myself. Also, I'll say, you're like, where did you get that from? And then people that really know me will go, oh, that's from the tick, isn't it? <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, something else that kind of that kind of fun to mention is uh, Jason was familiar with a lot of the tropes and trappings of this show, even from episodes that you didn't see, right? Yeah, because of the card game that uh, you and Mom made. Yeah, we made a card game years ago before you were born uh, called The Tick vs. Consciousness. And it's a... Um, it's a card game where you have to uh, find uh, items and uh, and, and uh, characters and villain heroes and villains uh, to complete missions, and they're all based on every episode of the show. And at some point, Jason, we should do a demo and show everybody that game because uh, I think um, I think there's a few people that would really enjoy seeing them, and it would be a cool thing to eventually make available as a PDF or something so that people can print it. Um, it your mom and I are so really proud of that game, and we get it out every so often and play it. Are there some things from the show that's not in that card game? Yeah, certainly. Is Dynamo in that game? No, Dynamo is not in that game. Don't get me started on Dynamo. <laughs> Okay, so Dynamo, and I, and I mentioned this in my um, in my video, my collection uh, from I, like four years ago, uh, is a character that was merchandised up the wazoo during the first wave of toys. Uh, as you can tell behind me, I'm a big tick collector, and uh, I know a lot about the, the the stuff that came out for the original series because I own nearly all of it. And I uh, that and there's a bunch of figures that we never got because uh, we did a couple of waves and then they stopped making toys. And they were Bandai. And the toys are fantastic. I uh, really really nice big scale like 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 five six inch figures. And um, are they like five five scale or even bigger than that? Maybe they're even they're even as, as much as six. I'm not sure, but yeah, I, I think it's the, the same were scale. Really smaller than that. Well, yeah, I'm talking about the main figure line, yeah, because then, then of course there were there were uh, you know the the, the the tiny like stand up toys and the, the wacky lined ups and stuff. But anyway, um, that first wave, Dynamo was in every was in every line. He was in every uh, every kind of figure they made. He's on the duffel bag I have. I think he's that right back here. Yeah, it was here at somewhere. Um, but that character shows up in the background during Chairface's party in the Tick versus Chairface Chippendale. Yeah, he's and not even in it. Like you could have, and we didn't get a Dean figure, but you could have put Dean on everything. It would have made more sense. Like, yeah. And the thing about that is they tell you what his power is and you don't know like anything <laughs> like <laughs> his power is exploding yeah and like he likes exploding things i guess like, somebody just latched onto that and thought it would make for a cool toy and, and maybe just add some variety to the stuff they were putting out right then but it's so irritating because we never got a chair face figure we never got a bread master uh you know there's so much cool like wouldn't, and, and even some of the more, uh, I don't want to say obscure, but like lesser remembered characters, like it might have been fun to have an Octo Paganini or especially an Eastern Block Robot Cowboy. Like there's so much stuff that we never got with a really toy attic series. And, but if you really thought Dynamo looked cool, you've got that. But for the longest time, I didn't even know where he showed up. I was convinced he wasn't even in the show for a long time. And then when we went, then, then a couple years ago, um, going back through the series, I was like, okay, there he is. That one shot. You didn't get Chrome Dome? Chrome Dome's in like three or four, like four or five episodes? Yeah. 
at least three. But anyway, so um, before we get into your best and worst uh, things, let me ask you what this uh, experience was like for you watching these episodes in order. Because you always just seen you know kind of kind of random episodes before. Because yeah. this is a very episodic thing. You don't have to watch the episodes in order. But I was wondering uh, if you uh, if you thought that this was a really good show to watch in order. If it should be watched that way. Um, I don't really think so. Um, maybe watch some of the first season stuff first. Um, oh, just to get yourself into it? Yeah. Cause okay, but you're basically saying you don't have to watch it in order, but start from the beginning. Is that what you're saying, or are you well, saying skip some of the early, uh, some of the earliest stuff? Um, skip some of the not so great episodes. Okay. And start with um, going through first season in like a different order, oh. kind of just okay. Go through first season, but just skip around, and then you can go to like. Second or third season. Well, I guess we'll find out maybe later which episodes you would skip. But I guess what I was getting at, it was, that was something of a leading question. I guess what I was getting at was, uh, were you surprised by how much continuity is actually in the show? Uh, yeah. That there is a progression in the show. Not that there's a big ongoing narrative or anything, but, like, it keeps really good track of its continuity. There's really nice attention to detail. Uh, there's, there's, there's little status quo shifts here and there. And they bring back a lot of stuff. Um, you know, stuff like uh, like Dot dating Dinosaur Neil. Uh, stuff like the progression of what happens to the moon, starting with Chairface uh, writing on it. Yeah. And stuff like uh, the addition of, of Speak in the third season. <laughs> yeah. a, lot, a lot of continuity here, and and that and that's some of the bigger stuff. There's some really nice subtle stuff here and there too. Uh, one of one of my and Jason's favorite things uh, became, and we didn't make a tally really, but we we were we were uh, kind of pointing out times where the uh, when no one understands you song would come back in the soundtrack. Yeah, and it actually happened in a, a spot where you didn't know that it was. A couple, actually. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, the big one I remembered was... Okay, so the the, uh, the No One Understands You song. It turns out that Townsend Coleman, who voices the tick... Townsend Coleman, by the way, was also Michelangelo in the 1987 Turtle Show. Mm. And uh, he... It turns out he has a really uh, uh, lovely singing voice, and he sings as the tick... Uh, in in that in that one episode, and uh, well, he actually sings in a couple episodes because he, he does it in uh, the second L C D episode too, uh, where where he sings um, opera, which is great. Uh, he sings Dona Mobile toward the toward the yeah. end of that. It's all like, Dona Mobile. That's fantastic. But in um, but in first season, there is maybe my favorite episode of that season, or certainly one of them, uh, the the Tick versus Arthur's bank account. Uh, he is on the fritz, where his relationship's on the fritz with Arthur because he's maxed out all his credit cards, trying to buy crime-fighting apparatus, and he's in his uh, crappy-looking crime tower uh, behind the apartment, <laughs> and uh, he's, he's, uh, he has this whole woe is me thing. He's feeling sorry for himself, like American Made says, and he goes, when no one understands you and the little things you do, and it's it's great. I, it's one of my favorite scenes in the whole in in, in the whole um, episode. When destiny surrounds you and wears you like a shoe, that's when you know it's over. That's when you know you're through. I never thought I'd be so big and blue. It's it's the best. I uh, but it keeps coming back in the soundtrack in several places, and I always remembered it in. Uh, we know. Really? Yeah, there's a part in the... And, and we never hear him sing it again. But again, it'll come back on the score. Uh, I love the score in the show, by the way. Uh, really, really great jazzy score. Um, and it, when uh, Arthur is telling him to stop gambling... Uh, there's oh. there's a there's a scene where we get that in in the in the soundtrack. Uh, but anyway, so yeah. I, I just want to make the point that there's a there's a uh, surprisingly great attention to continuity in the show. Yeah. Mm, so should we start with good things or bad things? Well, absolutely, man. Okay. 
Um, let's start with good things. Sure. So. So just overall, uh, I, I, as 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 far as uh, just like broad sweeping points about the entire series. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So I like the intro. Um, da dwee da 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 dwee da. And it's um it's really catchy. Um and just not even just the song, just how they um, cut everything from um, all of the past episodes. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really cool. Um, I think it's just a good sequence. Yeah, and I think, um, I don't like how they cut the music in third season. And we did that all the time with shows when they went on long enough, especially at Fox, where you'd have, you'd have shorter... Um, the shorter intros, and that's too good of a song to cut off. Yeah, but I do like how they um, edited that. Mm -hmm. Um, it just it sounds like that along with like the really like beats. Yeah. Um, it's like really beady or whatever. <laughs> it's really it's really beady. Yeah. <laughs> it's really up. Beat? Yeah, upbeat. Oh, or okay, oh, all right, sure. Beat. Um. Or a, a rhythmic? Is that yeah, what you're rhythmic. For? Oh, rhythmic. Yeah. And 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 upbeat. Um, it's it's weird that for two seasons, like I think maybe every season should have gotten its own version of that intro. It never changed the song, of course. Uh, but for two seasons, we or or do they change it midway through two? They change it midway through two. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for a long time, we're, we're getting an intro that's only using footage from, like, six episodes? Yeah, it's using footage from, like, four or five. Yeah. And it, and it never changes it until, like, halfway through the second season, and then they change the and then, song. And then, it, and then it opens with, or, or one of the, one of the first shots you get is the tick being attacked by drawers from the Ottoman episode. For me, yeah. just sits down for a moment. And that's pretty great. Yeah, and then and then they do the um, the shot in that one episode where it cuts from an ad, and now he's wearing this big thing. I don't remember what episode that is, but he's like, um, he punches a wall, and then or something. He comes into it, the shot. And then he's like, I'm, I'm here, and then it goes to an ad. And then after the ad, he has this big thing on, and then he, um, the, the yeah, grapple thing. Okay. Yeah, so okay, that's, so that's also Arthur's bank account. Oh, yeah. And that's one of the silliest mistakes in the show. <laughs> Uh, because of course you don't watch anything with commercials anymore, and even if you if you do, if you're really paying attention, you're like wait a minute, he didn't have that on when he when he when he got there. So uh, it, it's almost like retroactively, after they had already done all of the production for like like the last act of that episode, they went, oh wait a minute, we need to pay off all the crime fighting apparatus that Tick's been buying that put him and Arthur on the outs. So he's got to wear the grapple gun thing on his chest when he shows up to, uh, to to go after the terror. And he didn't have it when he got there. So he goes, spoon! And then lightning. And then and, and then you, you get back from commercial and it's on him. It's spoon! And lightning. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, it's, like, it's like an X-Men. For the future! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're with Bishop. Yeah. Where and then it changed immediately. Like for like first he says he says something and then he, he says he's like um when he's like um everyone is something when he's always like mad at someone and then calls him some but somebody something I forgot yeah I remember, I remember what people. it was but he says he says a different thing and then it comes back and we're like for the future yeah it's great <laughs> um let's see but yes it has a brilliant intro what else um. And then I like uh, all the quotes. Um, you take speeches? Yeah, especially the um, the funny ones. Um, I like like every single time he says spoon. I I love it. Um, I especially like it when he's like um, spoon. <laughs> <laughs> and when he's like. Um, I didn't know I would have to say this to you, yes. but 
spoon. Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably my, my favorite instance of spoon in one of my least favorite episodes. Or at least one of the not as great episodes. I liked it better this time around. Yeah. Uh, but the tape versus Arthur. Uh, Arthur gets his hands on uh, a, a belt from Baron Von Violent that makes him... Uh, giant and it's kind of uh, it, it, it's kind of like venom with bane. It's like a, it's like a bane belt, and uh, he becomes kind of the villain for most of that episode. And uh, he the tick fights him on a roof, and he and, and uh, he follows him up there, and he goes uh, and, and he goes. I never thought I'd have to say this to you, but Spoon. That's that's the best. Um, Spoon, real quick, is interesting because first of all, we don't have the catchphrase until toward the end of the first season, which also. Yeah. Uh, we first get in what episode? Um, Everybody say it with me. Take first Arthur's, Arthur's bank, bank account. account. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's actually the last episode of the first season. That is, you're right. That is the last because, episode. Because um, after that is, I think Reno Nevada. I think that's the first season two episode, isn't it? It's not. It's not. No, it's. Yeah. I don't think. I, 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 I forget because I always watch. So I watch these in a different order. Uh, this is one of those shows that has a different air order, I think, than the production order. And so uh, the the uh, I, I watch it in a different order than the than the air order. But anyway, um, the spoon is interesting because that's one of the big things that casual the folks that never spend a lot of time in the tick know about the tech. Uh, Spoon is the ticks beam me down Scotty. And it's not there at all in the first season. And then it's it's heavily used in the second and third, and uh, I can see some people saying to an irritating degree, I think it's great, I think it, I think it, it's, it's not overused at all. Uh, but it's one of those things where it's like now the show has like a, a catchphrase. Um, that it that that it could lean too heavily on that I don't think it does, but I that's that's one of the things that really stuck around and permeated and people remember about it, and it's not in either of the other two shows. I uh, I think we introduce um, the spoon idea in uh, the Amazon show, but I don't think he starts using it as ca as a catchphrase. I don't think he ever yells it. I forget because I haven't seen uh, season two more than once, but uh, I think if memory serves, I think somewhere in there they do kind of they kind of introduce spoon. I can't remember. I might be wrong about that. Uh, but like Warburton never does it, and they only got nine episodes. So I don't know if we ever would have gotten there. Uh, but everybody remembers Spoon. Yeah, and did they? And that is a comic thing, I think. Yeah, because I was gonna ask if he uh, did it in the comics. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a comic thing. Yeah. So, did Ben Enlund Ben Enlund actually um, create the Tick show? Yeah. Because I know he created the comics, and I know he created the live action with Warburton, but I didn't know. And the Amazon was. show. I mean, I mean, he's oh. he's the mastermind behind everything Tick. Yeah. Because if he's not there, Tick's not going to happen. And it's through sheer, sheer force of will that it ever got made. I mean, it's it's insane that there are three tick shows, regardless of the fact that, that two of them got canceled prematurely. The story I've heard on this show is that they were uh, they were given the opportunity to make a fourth season, and they were just kind of out of ideas, and they wanted to quit before uh, it got bad. But I don't know how much truth there is to that, and I need to do some deep dive research and find out more about the making of the show because there's not special features on DVDs, there's not commentaries. I mean, it's it's hard to get good information on the animated show as popular as it was uh, when it when it was on, and at least that that first and maybe second season, uh, it was bigger than it had any right to be. It was surprisingly popular. Did third season, because third season didn't get DVDs. No. Did it get VHS? It, it, some, yeah. Uh, the Tick vs. Arthur uh, is, a, is a VHS that I got. Mm. Is, that, is that third? That's... Or is that second? That's third. I think that's third, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, so yeah it, 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 it did some, but I mean, they never released all of that show on VHS, but very few things got everything released that won, like Star Trek or something. Yeah. So what other, uh, oh, I'm sorry, were, were you going to mm -hmm. say something else? Okay, what other uh, good things do you have, Jason? Um, 
So I like the endings where Tick tells the moral of the story. Oh, okay. So you're you're separating the the, the Tick speeches from just quotes, yeah. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite one of those? Do you have one? Mm, it's probably um when um he says um I forgot what it was. Um, what episode even is Even when Tiny Midges hit with me. Hit <laughs> <laughs> with fish? Yeah, the Tick versus Proto Clown. Yeah, that's, that's Proto Clown. Which is a deceptive episode because that's not... The Proto Clown part is not what anybody remembers about that episode. I wish it had a more kind of existential title because what everybody remembers with that episode is the Tick going through in a, a uh, an internal journey of discovery with the uh, with with the head with wings on the sides that 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 guides him uh, that look that that's that's you know you know his face I don't have little wings on the side of my head like some people <laughs> but yes that's a really good that's a really good speech yeah and why do midgets hit me with fish <laughs> and then everybody goes what and he goes you see mystery is about <laughs> Um, let's see. One of my one of my favorites is uh, man was never meant to tamper with any of the four basic food groups. <laughs> In Breadmaster. <laughs> yep. That one's really good. I like the, I like the speech at the end of uh, the little wooden boy in the belly of love. Um. Uh, <laughs> where where um where he's like love Arth and then and then. And then uh, the, the thing I most remember about that is not even the speech itself. It's just when uh, when Carmelita's dad says, you know, he really is quite brilliant. Yeah. Um, I think I remember liking the one where it's Chick and also um, Blitzen. Oh, yeah, that one's great. Or Tiggity Claire. Eclair. Where Eclair's also got a speech, and they're bouncing back and forth. I love that they don't actually get uh, back together right at the end of that episode, where they're still across the pond. Yeah. And you have the heroes in Europe and the and the heroes in America, uh, where they, they've got they've got kind of paralleling stories, not paralleling, but they happen at the same time. We cut back and forth between them, and then you're right at the at the end of that episode, uh, uh, Tick's got a speech and Eclair's got a speech, and they're kind of finishing each other's sentences. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Good good pick, man. Um, should we go to bad things, or should we pick another topic? Um, real quick, I also, I also like the one in Ants and Pants, where, where he's, he's like, uh, you know, I'm not actually really scared of ants, it's just when they all run out of a pair of pants like that. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Yeah. Um, let's do bad things. Captain Sanity's superhero in, emporium. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're just a head in a water cooler. I'm not here to talk about my problems, Dick. We're here to talk about yours. <laughs> okay, uh, you, you've got some bad stuff, huh? Uh, yeah. So before we get into bad stuff, let me just ask you the question. Do you Are you seeing yourself as, like, a fan of this material now? Yeah. I, it took me a while to think of bad things. Did it really? Yeah. I mean, you're growing up in a household of... Like tick fans, like clearly, like I'm, a, I'm a tick guy, um, and and you've always had this stuff around. But like before you finally finish the show, because I know you adore the first season of the Amazon show. Yeah. Like we watched that through together, and you seemed like enamored with it. Um, so did you think of yourself before we finally watched every episode as like a tick fan, or did you just think of it as like a thing that is fun to watch? But I don't think of myself as like a tick guy yet. Yeah, I think it was just, it was a thing that was fun to watch, but, like, I liked it, like, a lot, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't, like, that good. It wasn't, like, top three, top five material? Yeah. But is it starting to get to that, to that place now, yeah. you think, or? Probably. Okay. I don't know if I put Lost there. Well, you should probably finish it before you decide. Uh, but yeah, and, and like obviously, uh, you know, you use your own brain and make your own decisions. Of course, uh, I'm not trying to, you know, force you anything in anything or brainwash you. But um, you, but you you do seem to uh, just naturally veer towards some of the same stuff that I really like. Um, so far, Freddie, your brother, I mean, he's just five, but uh, he doesn't always. 
You know, like he hasn't yeah. he hasn't latched on to Star Trek the way that you have, the way that you did that that age. Yeah, you the only want to watch it all the time. Star Trek things that he will watch are triple episodes, and they just didn't make enough of those. Although we should show him the animated episode because there's there's one more triple thing he's not seen. I think he has seen it. <laughs> has yeah, he, really? he has seen it. That's great. Um. So for him, Star Trek no. is just triples. Well, it's triples and it's TAS. Because he loves the animated show. Super, well, he likes cartoons, yeah. yeah. So, but, yeah. So, um, bad stuff? Bad things. Okay. Okay. I can't, I can't wait. So, you said you had to really scrape the bottom to, to, to find anything. Yeah. All right, here we go. Um. So, my first thing is, Tig is way too silly at times. Um, and I think sometimes they just go way too far. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. And do you think in an out of character way? Do you think there's places where you're like, I don't actually buy that this character is this nut in that case of you? Well, I don't know. Um, we don't know much about his backstory, too. It, that's part of the the, the 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 whole thing, though. Is like that was always intentional. Yeah. I mean, are you saying you wished we actually got? Yeah, so that I could figure tag? out why he's so nuts. I love the the ambiguity with that though. I've always I mean the the tick is like the Joker for me where we're not supposed to know. Yeah. But you but you actually want to know. Yeah, because he's just too crazy. I wonder how much of that is the influence of the Amazon show because that looked like a place where we finally might actually get it where he was gonna where everyone was gonna break that rule. And we were on our way. We had to wait all these clues. And then yeah. the second season gave us nothing about that. And we, second season is fun, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, there's all these mysteries set up. We don't do anything with it. And then it gets canceled, and now we'll never know. Because, of yeah. course, it did. And, um, and, he, and he's like, he doesn't really remember anything about his life. Yeah. You're talking about in the show or that show? In, well, kind of in both shows. And that's not really even discussed that much here. Like where he came from? Yeah. I mean, the, even even the fact that he doesn't really know, he's just. I always thought that this that this tick was somewhere in between the other two, where he's not an idiot, <laughs> but he's maybe dumber than the Serafinowitz tick. Hmm. The the Amazon tick. Yeah. Um. So, can you think of any examples? Of stuff that you where you thought they went too far? I um probably in Arthur's bank account. Um What? Cause it's not <laughs> too crazy, but I like I love that's my favorite episode. But he he's just I don't I don't get it. The plot of the episode is is too is he's too crazy. That's yeah. like the plot of the episode. Yeah. And it just yeah. But that but that's the whole point is that like he's really hard to live with with Arthur or, or, or for Arthur to live with. But at the end of the day, he's always still going to come through. And he does have kind of little character arcs where he learns to dial things back. I mean that does happen. Like, by the end of that, because because uh, right at the end of the, and, and usually Tick doesn't have, like, a full-blown character arc. Usually if yeah. somebody has a character arc, it's, it's, it's somebody else facilitated through, um, you know, more or less a, 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 a show formula and the Tick doing what the Tick does. He's not really a character that changes, usually. But that's an episode where, you know, at the end, I... Uh, with his speech, he says there are established credit limits. Like, he's he's learning. Yeah. And, um, he's also kind of crazy in Reno, Nevada. Yeah. But that's kind of the whole point um, of that episode. Well, not the whole point, but the whole thing with the gambling thing. Well, and I think that's consistent where he has kind of a greed streak. Yeah. Surprisingly, which makes a lot of sense because he's unrealistic about where things come from because he doesn't work a job. He's not interested in money or he's not interested in earning wealth. He's interested in fighting crime and that doesn't give him stuff or money. So he doesn't understand how accumulating things works. So if you hand him something, 
he can get really greedy and start going down a rabbit hole of like I want more and more and more and more. Yeah. But uh, usually that doesn't happen because that's not where his priorities are. So he's just unrealistic about it. He's 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 kind of a, he's kind of a little kid. Yeah. In that way, and I think the, you know, the Tick versus Wiener Nevada is really consistent with Arthur's bank account. Yeah. And I think that's I, th- I think that's really that's really poignant of you to bring to bring those those two episodes up and together. Also, uh, Proto Clown, he's kind of crazy in that. Because a big clown hit me. <laughs> but not just that. Also. But we kind of figure out that his brain is not that crazy. It's just him. What do you mean? Like, cause That's a pretty crazy brain. His brain is actually kind of less crazy than oh, him without his brain. I'm sorry. I see what you mean. You mean kind of kind of his, his conscience, kind of his guide. Yeah. Like, the tick with wings is less crazy than regular tick. I feel yeah. Like. Oh, you, 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 yeah. You're right. He actually, I say conscience. No, it introduces itself as his mind. Yeah. And basically, the idea is that the tick is just easily distracted and doesn't tend to use his his brain to accomplish things, which is why he needs Arthur. Arthur has always been his brain, right? And mm-hmm. so, yeah, you're right because 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 he, he introduces himself and he goes, uh, this, "This is this is the the head, the disembodied head with the wings," and he goes, "Tick." This is your mind speaking. Sorry I haven't been around much lately. I'm easily distracted by shiny objects. But the mind itself is easily distracted. Yeah. Um. But, yeah. This is your escalator to enlightenment. What do I need one of those? What are these for? Oh, gee, I guess I don't know. What are other bad things? So, so you think sometimes Tick is just... And you're not even saying inconsistent. Is it just a taste thing where you're just like... I don't know if I like him being this 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 wacky or manic or whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. That's so, fair. Some of the bad guys make no sense. <laughs> um, In what way? I mean, this show has a real broad internal because, logic. So, one reason is just... um The... Bad guy itself, um, does not go with his plot he's plotting. Okay. Like, what does a guy with a chair for head have to do with the moon? <laughs> and, like, I, and, and... So you want more point, congruency between, th- that's interesting, between, between the, the motif... Of the villain yeah. and what he's trying to do. Because I like the ones more that don't have that. Where it's like, we don't even call that much attention to the fact that he has a chair. He just happens to have a chair for a head. But then in in Reno, we keep going back to Reno for whatever reason. Um, the Finn, it's all just a plot to get a bunch of fish. Like, I, th- I think it's a lot better when they're not connected. But you wish they were more They were more so. Yeah. So, also... Um, LC doesn't have that problem. Yeah. And Breadmaster doesn't have that problem. But also, another um, example um, of a different thing is... <laughs> of a different thing? <laughs> um, that is the best why... way to change a subject I've ever heard. So another example <laughs> of a completely different thing. <laughs> so, uh, basically, an example <laughs> of a different thing is... Um, why... Would a, like, Butterman have a brain? Like, these things, just, like... Yeah, it, and, it, and, it, and it's called it comic absurdity, it right? Doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, no, it's like, no, that's it. That's exactly right, but there's a suspension of disbelief that, you, that you're supposed to go with because it's really heightened and really absurd, and I like that those things, that there's no attempt at... Uh, an explanation for that stuff. Those things are all supposed to be part of a conceit. And it comes from uh, kind of golden age comic storytelling and it's kind of parroting that stuff. And it's going back to things like Dick Tracy and stuff where you have you have mutant looking uh, people with, with like crazy heads and faces that aren't even possible. <laughs> but in this world they are possible. Yeah. But that kind of thing... 
uh, did that kind of thing take you out? Were you, were you, kept, you kept trying to figure out, like, how does a guy end up with a pineapple for a head? Yeah, and also stuff like, like the thin, where he's like, Why does how, he talk? How, how, how? <laughs> is, is he from that one show that's set in 2019? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that's, um, what one show said in 2019? <laughs> that water is show. Is this an example about something completely no, different? No, no, that water show from 2009, not to, not from, it's from the 90s, but it's set in 2009. Oh, are you talking about Sequest? Yeah. Okay, it's Sequest. like, is he from Sequest? Does, does Sequest take place in 2019? I guess it does. Yes, it yeah, does. Yeah, that's really funny. That's why you wanted to do... We were gonna, yeah, we were... I was I was I was working on a review for that back uh, last year back in 2019 <laughs> way back in 2019 and uh, that was a long up, time ago that didn't end up actually happening unfortunately yeah. maybe someday but you're right it would have been a lot cooler to get it out in the year that it was yeah yeah man. anyway but we digress um, yeah we do but you, you know Jason money doesn't put fish on the table <laughs> fish puts fish on the table. <laughs> Um, also, so, I feel like Arthur doesn't get that much to do. He, sure, he, he, he gets up, like, the plan to defeat people or whatever, and he's kind of the brains, but, I don't know. He, he just, I felt like he needed his own, um kind of episode because he didn't really get that interesting i feel like i'm and also I, i'm wondering if this is also for you some influence from the amazon show where he's the protagonist of that whole show yeah um so it wasn't enough for you that he got like the romance subplot with carmelita and stuff like that like yeah. Like you, like you thought he needed straight up like character episodes. Yeah. And I. Is that part of why you like the Tick versus Arthur better than I do? Yeah. Because it's because it's his episode. It's kind of his episode. Yeah. Um. What is it? I mean, he has a full blown character arc there, where it's it's all about his insecurities and being the sidekick and not being, uh, you know. You know, it's, it's fit and muscular as he'd like, and he feels like he's not good enough for his girlfriend, and yeah. Yeah. I, I get that. Um, but I mean, that's, that, that's a fair criticism. But I, I, I kind of just want every show to be like Lost, where <laughs> it has a backstory yeah. thing. Yeah. So, so now you've watched so much Lost, anything that isn't that isn't giving you some background, <laughs> you feel like you're missing something. Yeah. And not every show is the same, Jason. That, I know. That's, that's an, that's an I important know, thing to I mention. I know, but I feel like I'm just missing something <clears throat> for a lot of shows. It just doesn't give me, like, just give me backstory on, like, like, I, it, if I want, like, a character episode, I kind of want to know his backstory. Yeah. I feel like that's good. Well, that's fair. And when I said it, not everything is the same, I just mean that, you know, some some shows and some stories uh, really warrant that, and other things, that's just not what they're intending. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, you gotta, to some degree, take it on its own terms. Like, um, if you're saying that the characters aren't drawn enough to appreciate what's happening to them, or where they're sympathetic, or uh, where you understand them, uh, like I get that, but if but, but um, <laughs> it sounds it sounds like you've just been watching a show where we know everything about everybody, and you're wishing that <laughs> everything has that. And I don't know that. I, and also in like a 22 minute cartoon that's a parody of superhero stuff, I don't really know that you're gonna get that. Yeah. And I uh, when we made it a little bit more, I. <clears throat> uh, you know, traditional storytelling. When we got to the Amazon show, you you did start to get that that yeah. kind of thing from the tag. And um, I mean, this is this is traditional, kind of strictly traditional Saturday morning cartoon done as well as I think it ever was. And yeah, and I think that this is probably better than the Amazon show. It it definitely is, but the Amazon show interesting. Was, 
better in different ways. And yeah. yeah. It's been rad different things. Yeah. Well, should we get into your favorite and least favorite episodes? Um, sure. All right. Um, should we, should we do my favorite characters first? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, Absolutely. so I didn't put least favorite characters. There's not anybody that you just really don't like? Yeah. So you're not like your mom that's just like, Brainchild, boo! No, I, I like Brainchild. He's not my favorite, but... What's not... Brainchild's real name? I don't remember. Oh, well, this is going to be really fun when we get to the trivia. Charles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Xavier. No, not Charles Xavier. <laughs> And it's not Xavier, it's yeah. Xavier because he's the, because he created the X-Men. Anyway. But he's Xavier. That's such a big pet peeve of mine when anyone calls Xavier Xavier. <laughs> it's X-Xavier, it's the X-Men. Anyway. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, so I think I really like American Maid. Yeah. Um, she's great. She's pretty good. Um, that's not just because I like girls and things. Yeah. Um, I love... When she just starts um, singing that song in that second I'll See It episode. Because she has a horrible singing voice. Yeah. It's really and funny. Because that was a song I already knew. Yeah. Because well, she I started singing like patriotic standards in yeah. my country tis of me. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> um, that was really funny. Yeah, American Maid is uh, kind of the Captain America of the show. Uh, she is the really competent, uh, kind of no-nonsense, down-to-earth, straight-man superhero. Yeah. And you'll find out later that Super Urchin also is, to some degree, that, but you don't know it until you get to his element. Yeah. Because he gets an episode. Yeah. Um, and it's awesome. Yeah. It's not... It. I don't think it's top three. No, it isn't for me, either. Yeah. But the Tick versus and, and he's not my favorite. Um, he's Freddy's favorite. He's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Freddy loves Sewer. Freddy Urgent. just keeps going bad, bad, really bad. <laughs> no, really? Does he ever yeah, say definitely? definitely? Bad. <laughs> That's awesome. Not everything's definite, you know. <laughs> uh, can I throw in a bad thing real quick? Sure. Before we get. I just thought of this before we get into your, into your character. Something that has always driven me crazy about this show is. The inconsistency in the title scheme. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have the Tick Versus, and then you have Nothing Versus, and then you have Tick Versus, and... Yeah, they take they take the the off for no reason, and then when you get in the second season, there's some, there's some great, uh, you know, really funny episode titles, but I think if you start with a scheme like that, you should always stick with it. You know, sort of like the Friends thing was like the one where, and they for for you know however ten seasons or however, however long that was on was it eight seven I forget however long that show was on um it's it's uh it's the one where this happens if you start with that you ought to keep it but if you don't because they do change it at the beginning of the second season so it's like okay just the first season we're gonna have the brand of the tick verses and then after that we're gonna change it okay then never go back to it again yeah and, and then, then they, they just they start do. oscillating. And then they do, and but they but they kept going between it, and yeah. and when they did do it, it wasn't the. I didn't and, like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what are other characters that you like, Jason? Um, I like Human Bullet. Just as an idea. Yeah, I I I also like Fire Me Boy. <laughs> Fire Me Boy. And um. Remember that scene with his wife? Yeah. Where she's like. He's out playing with his friends like a normal kid. Then you fire me, boy. No. And then I think at some point he gets Arthur to do it. I don't think Arthur li ever lights the cannon, but um, there, there's there's one where he and Tick both shoot out. Uh, oh, that's in Breadmaster. Oh, to yeah. To blow up the giant souffle. A triple charge? No. Um. Oh man, really? What? You you wrote down Big Shot. Yeah. All right, talk about Big Shot. So, um, the first episode where we get him, which is the pilot, um, he. Well, that's weird. 
kind of. It's it's uh it's the 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 intro. It's the origin episode. I mean, sort of. We don't ever get an origin for the tick, but it's the episode where the tick comes to the city and meets Arthur. I don't think it's the first one they made. It 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 seems like. And again, I wish I knew more about the production of the show. It seems like they must have made Chairface first. Yeah. But that's the the the, the aired order because that's the. Maybe what they did was was Shareface was the pilot that they actually used to sell the show, and then they made uh, the Tick versus the Idea Men as the the true first episode. Maybe that's what happened. I'm just not sure. Yeah, but um, anyway, like the pilot, um, he's he's crazy. He's like shooting everything, and it's turning into skulls. Well, what's what's he appear of? Um, Punisher. The Punisher. Yep. And. That's why he probably does the skull thing. Um, the Punisher doesn't do that. <laughs> and like, um, I think I read somewhere that like his mom was mad at him or something, and that's why he started doing that. Yeah. Something. We get that. Uh, well, we get that at the end of that episode, uh, and I think it, I think he brings it up once or twice more. But he's like, "Why did you love me, Mama?" Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and then. Hey, it's he's... Big Shot, my favorite. Ex gun toting vigilante. <laughs> and then he um stops doing that and he's trying to like he's like Wolverine in the X Men show. Kind oh, of Oh okay. That's if, fun. If 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 X Men um if if X Men's first season was everyone becomes the X Men, that would be Wolverine would basically be Big Shot. Or, because, um, okay. Because Big Shot um, is trying, like, not to get all crazy and stuff. Yeah. Because. Yeah, um, yeah he's, he's trying to uh, dial down his violence. So he's a yeah. Punisher went to therapy. Yeah. I, I really wish we had an episode where we actually see him go to the floating head in, the, in a water bowl. I really wish that that's what could happen. That's great, yeah. Like a like a therapy of where he, he yeah. goes to Captain Sanity's yeah. Aquarium. And Captain Sanity is brought up again later, but we never we never actually go back there. Yeah, I wish that's what happened. That's that's a great point. I wish Ants and Pants had like um gotten like before the second Big Shot episode. Yeah. No, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. Um, you know what my favorite Big Shot thing is? Hmm. When he becomes the photographer for Dot and Neil's wedding. He's like, freeze! <laughs> and he gets all crazy again. It's awesome. Tick hands him a camera and then uh, he, he just can't help but act like he's got a gun again. And then yeah. there's that great bit where Tick goes, uh, Big Shot, give me a hand grenade! He's like, I don't, I don't have any hand grenades. And then he just breaks down and, and, and um, kind of falls apart because, yes, indeed, he did bring hand grenades. It's great. Um, <laughs> and then, let's see, best villains. Ooh, best so, villains. This is exciting. I like Breadmaster. You're a Breadmaster for the win! He's my favorite. Um, one of my favorites. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out one of my trivia questions right now. Okay. And then we'll do nine more here in a little bit, okay? I wrote ten down. Okay? Oh, my gosh. One of my questions was... Name every appearance of Breadmaster. Hmm. Every, like, how many, like, uh, how the many? number, or... Well, yeah, yeah, tell me how many times he appears, and then can you give me the episode title? Well, he appears in Tick versus Breadmaster. That's true, you got one. Mm -hmm. And then he appears... That, that episode could have been called Tick versus Bread. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what do you think the whole rolling pin thing? It's one of my favorite yeah. scenes of the whole show, where he where he eats the bread. <laughs> Tick, you ate that bread into submission. <laughs> um, and then he is in that episode where everyone is like, um, like Chairface has this party or something. No, Chairface is there. Um, but it's... It's Terror. Nope. Well, Terror's also there. Terror's there. Yes. And Handy is there. Uh-huh. No, Handy's not there. No, he's not. I don't think. I don't think Human Time is there. Nope. Um... Oh, wait, no. Um, 
No, Brandmaster's not at what you. So you're you're talking, yeah, you're talking about the auction. There's there's a with, big table and a bunch of people are at that table. Okay, we're talking about and, different things. So, um, what you're talking about is Don Neal's wedding. Oh yeah, that's Don Neal's wedding. Yeah. Yeah. But then the other one that he's in, where he actually has his own plot again. He's the oh, other yeah. villain plot in. In wait. But he kind of has a villain plot in Dot Neil's wedding because he has the giant cake. Well, he—that's yeah, yeah. It's part of the larger plot, though. It's not his own plot. But Wait, he's working it, solo again. Does it in another episode have a giant car or something? Yes. That, he's got a tank. Yeah, he's got a tank. But before the tank, uh, there's a mystery where it turns out that he's the villain because it's obvious he that, that, that he was the villain. Because he sent all of the heroes gingerbread men. Oh, yeah, that's in, uh, that is in the Eclair the episode. Tip versus Europe. Oh. Uh, yes, indeed. I don't, I didn't remember. And that's Fred Master's three big appearances. He might have had a little cameo somewhere that I'm not remembering, but that's his three big appearances. Okay. Yeah. So you love Fred Master. Yeah. And then, what's another villain I like? So, I like Evil Midnight Bomber who bombs at midnight. The, the Evil Midnight Bomber who bombs at midnight. Yeah. Um, In the Tick Versus? Oh, that's Tick Versus. Um, the Tick? Oh, yeah, that's that's the Barry episode. That's the Barry episode. I totally... He's going to blow up the comic club. Yeah, because... He said, you got bombs, right? He said, blow up the comic club. <laughs> It's filled with superheroes. You'll go down in supervillain history. Um, yeah. That's what your mom's favorites do. Um, but yeah, he's crazy. Oh yeah. I like I like crazy people, but I feel like some people are just like too crazy. <laughs> uh, who's another of your favorite villains? Um. Um, I like the Deadly Bulb. Oh, the Deadly Bulb Bulb's the, one of the best. I love Heroes. Yeah. So Heroes is a parody of cops. Yeah, virtual cop. You got, you got Heroes in your town so bad. <laughs> and so the tick is being followed around by a camera crew. And he goes up against a villain called the Deadly Bulb. And he's and this villain is using... Uh, a bulb motif to mask the fact that he has... A pig for a leg. A pig for a leg. That's right. And that's great. Because he has a pig leg instead of a peg leg. I'm so dumb. I never, I never, I never picked up on that pun. Really? Oh my, oh my god. I'm such an idiot. Yes, of course that's what that is. Well done. I'm, I'm, I'm so stupid. This is why you show things to your kids. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we're, we're coming up on an hour, so we should blow through some things pretty quick here. I think. Uh, okay. What I, uh, what other categories? You want? You want to go? You know what? Maybe now would be a good time since we already started. You want to go ahead and go through some trivia? Sure. And then and then we can reveal some of your favorite episodes. Yeah. You want to do that? My least favorite episodes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. If, if we get to it. Uh, no, we'll definitely, no, we definitely gotta look at your favorite episodes, absolutely. Um, we'll, we'll go through these kind of quick if you don't know them right away. I'll, I'll tell you what they are. Are you ready? There's some hard stuff here. There's some easier stuff here. Hey, you asked me to write down some hard ones, so I did. In The Tick versus The Tick, who checks heroes into the comic club? Um, Floating Suit Man. Yeah, um, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's floating. Oh, and he makes Arthur go to the sidekick lounge because yeah. sidekicks go to the sidekick lounge. And sidekicks don't kiss. <laughs> sidekicks don't kiss. That's an episode. Um, Very good. Don't know. He, I, I, I'm not good at character. Like, I'm the, bus the I'm no. the doorman, but <laughs> men call me Jim. <laughs> <laughs> What item? I, I guess I started with some of the hard ones. Like, let, me, let me go. Let me go to an easier one. Uh, speak turns out not to be a dog. 
what is he really? He's a... Oh my gosh, I know this! Because he's a <laughs> giant something. Yeah. Um, He's like a giant rabbit or something. Nope. No, no, no. Um, um, it's, it's a tiny thing. It's another word for a tiny animal. I thought. <laughs> rodent. Um, he's a giant rodent. <laughs> he's a big rat. Yeah. Okay, so this is this one's kind of obscure, but I know you love Brad Masters, so I'm curious to see if you know it well enough to know this. Mm. This always stuck out to me. What item does the tick salvage from the wreckage of Stewart's grocery store and tells him he can start to rebuild with? Do you remember this? He picks up something and he hands it to Stewart and he goes, You can rebuild! Milk? No, not milk. Bread? Uh, I'm Milky the Milk Boy, not bread. This uh, one, this one's pretty uh, obscure. Some sort of vegetable? Okay, right? Uh-uh. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Right? Uh -huh. Cottony swabs! What the heck is that? It's Q-tips. Oh! Oh, it's got I a box of Q-tips. I didn't even, like... Cottony swab. I didn't know if you'd know that. Uh, oh, here's, here's a good one. What villain gets thrown out of the enemy awards just as Venus arrives in Armless But Not Harmless. Um, that's the... It's a villain cameo. That's... That's the person who's... Um, it's somebody we actually just talked about. Is it Buttery Patch? Nope. It's not Buttery Patch. Buttery Patch. <laughs> It's, it's called Buttery Pat because you have a pat of butter. Then. Oh. I can vindicate myself for the peg leg thing. Well, okay, you ready? Yeah. It's the evil Midnight Bomber. Oh, yeah. Cause Do you remember he, that? He's, yeah. he's trying to get into the enemy awards, but he gets thrown out. I thought his only other cameo was in Heroes. Nope, he's got two cameos. Um, but he actually um, talks in this. In Heroes, we just see him in a montage. Okay, so uh, your mom wrote this question. Okay. Name at least one object the tick shows omnipotence to try to convince him not to eat the earth. Uh, In Alone Together. <laughs> <laughs> you he's got a box full of stuff. So we gotta appeal to his human side. This is a. Uh, this is actually hard. Yeah, this is pretty tough. Um. Um. Uh, um. <laughs> box of candy. Nope, not a box of candy. Uh, okay, so one of the one of the easier ones is uh, he's got the basket of cheeses that the city gave Arthur when they thought Tick died. His condolence cheeses. That's that's one of the things. There's also bowling trophy. That, that was oh, that was oh, one. I was thinking of the wrong part of the. Oh no! This is toward this is toward the end of the episode. We're standing on the bridge in front of uh, Yeah. Uh, and then and then there is. Um, and he's got. Um, he's got like forks or something. Right? Plastic pirate swords to hold our sandwiches together. Yeah. That's one of them. And another one is paint by numbers co covered bridge scene. Oh my. That always stuck with me. I think it's really funny. So yeah, uh, that was your mom's fault. That one, that one's pretty hard. Uh, what did Arthur do for a living before he became a sidekick? Um, he, mm, he And this is true in every iteration, by the way. Oh really? Yep. All four iterations, all three TV shows and the comics. Um, this is easy because I know what job it is, but I don't know what the name of it is. It's where he like types and <laughs> and um. He's an accountant. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah, like was like an in um like in that one movie. Um, I forgot what that movie was called. I don't know. How does the Ottoman get beaten at the end of Evil Sits Down for a Moment? Oh 
yeah, um, she, she goes in the world's most comfortable chair. She goes in the world's most comfortable chair. Do you, do you feel that we are currently sitting in the world's most comfortable chair? No. No, me, me, me neither. This, this is a pretty old chair. This is not a comfortable chair. <laughs> in what... Oh, we already talked about the Breadmaster episodes. Okay, two more. What is the name of the last episode of the show? Oh, um... Okay, um... And the Tick versus Education. Yeah, Education. What do you think of that one? It's With pretty Uncle good. Uncle Creamy, it's pretty good. Yeah. Who's your, who, who's your, who's your favorite superhero student? I like squirrels. I like squirrels, yeah. And that's funny because that's before anybody knew who Squirrel Girl was. But yeah, that's... Um, <laughs> and what did she call herself? She's not Squirrel Girl. She's the flying squirrel. The flying squirrel. squirrel, that's what it is. My favorite is Sarcastro. Oh, really? Because that's hilarious. Um, okay. is, isn't he named after... Isn't he supposed to be like... Um, He's the dictator Fidel Castro. And he's, yeah. sarc- and, and he's sarcastic. Uh, what is Carmelita's father's name? Mm. Mr. Murphy? <laughs> right, he's Robocop. <laughs> no, um, he is J.J. Vatos. Oh, you, just didn't, you just didn't remember that? J.J. Matos. I didn't even know that. Okay. Uh, Jason, we have just a few minutes before we're going to have to wrap up. Uh, was, because we got to go get some dinner. Was that all so, of the uh, trivia that's questions? That's all the trivia questions. Really? Yeah. That was ten? That was ten. I well, got we one. Started, but yeah. You, no, I got two. No, no, you got more than that. I got two. You got a couple. I got two. Yeah. I mean, I made them kind of hard. What? You knew accountant. You just couldn't think of the name. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, top three favorite episodes. Let's do it. Yeah. We've been getting real in-depth in a lot of stuff, so we'll just kind of blow through, through this real quick. Right. Go ahead. Um, number three, the tick versus the big nothing. Yeah. Um, Did we talked about that. That's that's the tick getting abducted by aliens again. And uh, with the infinity ball, yeah. which is just a, a magic eight ball. Or not a magic <laughs> eight ball. It's just a, an eight ball from pool. Turn, turn sideways. And that has one of my favorite... We got, so, we got those <laughs> on Earth. We got higher numbers, too. <laughs> it's so good. I also like the end of that episode a lot with Deflator Mouse, where he's like, uh, so can you prove any of this? Well, we're still alive, right? We're all still here, right? <laughs> um, number two, Uncommon Cold. Yeah. I, the Thrakazog, it's That's the best. The Which is, and it's crazy that I, I've always thought it's, it's, it's us that I like that as much as I do because I don't like gross out humor and that has a little bit of that with the mucus tick, but it's yeah. handled as classily as I think it, it can be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is my side of the living room and that is your, your side, side of the living room. room. And my shoe drinks way out of the middle curtain is disgusting. <laughs> Dude, that was my water bottle. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> All right. And Jason's number one favorite episode. I think you already revealed this, but go ahead. Yes. Take versus Arthur's bank account. When no one understands you. Okay, so um, what's your favorite moment in that episode? Because it's got a lot of good ones. Um. It's 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 um. It's either, it's probably when Arthur says, get out of the, my apartment. Oh, really? Get out of my life! <laughs> so you like the dramatic stuff of that episode? Yeah. Interesting. I think I might actually like Grandpa Wore Tights even a little bit better at this point. Grandpa Wore That's the second tier episode. I remember it because of the chocolate. Oh yeah! It's so good when they when they bring back. And the smartest move they made was bringing was bringing back the human ton because he has a whole uh, uh, kind of villain team um, in that episode, a whole kind of legion of doom, and uh, in, in in his first appearance. But he only brings back human ton, and it's and it's great. 
Uh, yeah. The whole read a book thing never gets old. <laughs> um, worst episodes? Worst episodes, okay. So, I'm not a big fan of that mustache feeling. I'm not either. It's not. Project Shave? The Nick Fury uh, parody. Yeah, because it's just yeah. supposed to be like Shield or something. Mm-hmm. The everyone. Nick Rage, I think. Is it Nick Rage or is it something? It's something Rage. Or it's like Dick Rage. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not Dick Rage. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Nikki. Uh, but yeah, I know I'm I'm with you. Um, it, there's a couple things that are really funny in that. I mean, it's it's got its moments, but um, I don't know. Just the premise of that is not funny to me. Like they think it is. Yeah. The thing where the tick's got a got a mustache that he thinks he grew overnight, and it's actually a secret weapon, <laughs> and it drags him around all over town, and like I don't know. I don't like that whole scene where it's where like it, where it attacks him. Yeah. And when he goes up to his nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it's not it's not great. And then, oh, gym rage, special agent gym rage. That's what it was. Yeah. It's not dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what else you What else you got? Um. We're gonna try to remember you didn't say that. <laughs> um. Um. Yeah, devil diapers. <laughs> <laughs> devil diapers is one of the worst things ever. Yeah. Uh, and it's the only episode of that show that I really just hate, like, with almost a passion. Yeah. Even, even the kind of mediocre ones that I don't go back to that much, they've got their moment. And, and even Devil and Divers has a couple of lines that are really funny, but that whole that whole premise is terrible. It, it's, it's the... And maybe it's good they didn't make a fourth season, because if they were afraid they were running out of ideas, that might have been the kind of thing we got, like, over and over again. Yeah. Because that's the return of Mr. Mental. And he... Tells everyone he's a baby, and when we see that it's actually him, and they're like holding him. I, first off, how do they not tell that that baby is super? Because it's mind control. But it's just mind control. It's just it, it's just from from their perspective, they're they're not even holding that much weight because he's making them think that it's a baby, like. Yeah. That's all it is. The, but the stupider th- the, 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 the the weirder thing is that um, Mel, <laughs> Mr. Mental, um, doesn't expect to be treated like a baby when he is making them all think he's a baby. It's like, and, 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 and this is one of the most, uh, you know, awkward and hardest things to sit through, but like Tick changes his diaper and he's like, oh God, why are you, I mean, yeah, if you, if, he, that's gonna happen. He thinks you're a baby. Like I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, and also, why can't he just turn into a dog or something? Yeah, or like something like that. Cause yeah, and then later they do because they have the whole dingo thing in that episode. Yeah, but or or with like, that other scientist yeah, he's fighting with. Something. Yeah. Just be some sort of. A- an animal be like a crab. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't even buy the premise in the first place. But then, you know, even if I did, it's just like uncomfortable. Yeah. Um. Yeesh. Got one more. Oh, okay. One, not one more worst episode. One oh, more top. One more category. Okay, cool. So we're we're almost at the end. Um. So this is a show that is kind of. Toy centric, it's it's trying to be kind of toy addict. Yeah, and I mean, like like I said earlier, it had a great figure line. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this that looks like it would be fun to play with. But it has some stuff that was not um, actually made. Made that, that you wish they made. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, first thing was Breadmaster, and I wish he came with huge bread. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be awesome. Like, maybe, like, Breadmaster, um, Buttery Patch, and... Pat. <laughs> Not Patch. It's a pat of butter. The guy's name is Pat. <laughs> uh, and and it'd, be cool if he got, it'd be cool if he got a vehicle, too, if he got his donut-shooting tank. Yeah. That you, you, and Gingerbread Men. 
Yeah, and it, yeah. it could have had a battery pack in it, and it could have been like the pizza throwing tank from Ninja Turtles. That would have been awesome. Yeah. You could have had like a whole like a hundred dollar set that like <laughs> Yeah, that would be killer. I'm with you. Um and then I want um a human bullet thing. Um like we have human bullet, but I wish it came with like the fire me boy and the uh cannon. Yeah, and you could shoot him out and, yeah. and, and the figure becomes the projectile. Yeah. Like, um... It would have been... You know what it would have been like? Uh, it would have been like the, the crash test dummy sets. Yeah. And, like, the shooting could have been like, uh... <laughs> the spawn figure. <laughs> <laughs> like overkill? Yeah, overkill. That shoots his own head? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you press a button. No, that no, that's a, that's a really good point. And, and with Human Bullet, uh, you, you could have had... You know, like a like a wall or something. I'm thinking again. I'm thinking of crash test dummies, where like you you, yeah. could, you could shoot him through different things, through walls. Or and then he could have had a bad video game too. <laughs> maybe he'd come with like a big flower, or something. Yeah, or like a wall. Or something. You know, like in the 500 year bloom episode where he shoots to, but he doesn't even hit the flower. So I guess you could intentionally miss to recreate the episode. Yeah. <laughs> and then I want the play sets. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Dad has a really rare thing. That's like a book thing. It's a, it was it's a brochure a that went to retail stores trying to get them to uh, carry the tick line. And basically, there was a play. There were uh, play sets. Um, there was like an apartment one, and there was a roof one that looked awesome. And. Um, we can't find that on the internet anywhere, and um, we like. I wish it was an actual thing. Yeah, this is the only evidence that I've ever found that this existed, and you can you can see the prototype, and they were advertising it like it was going to come out, and then the toy never came out. Yeah. And I, I talk about that in my collection video, so you can go back and, and take a look. at it. I'm not going to pull it out right now, um, but I'm with you. I would have loved to have had that. And. A uh, playset that I want is the sewer. Yeah, well, that would have been awesome. In 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 uh, like and it could, the sewer like, urchin's apartment come with sewer urchin. And we didn't get any playsets for that. Uh, we didn't really get a lot. Of, we didn't really get vehicles either. the the the, cl- the only thing we got was the box uh, from the Tick versus the Idea Man. The first scene you get in the series, if if you if you if you watch it in that order. Um, where it's it's that it's that big torture box that the Tick is trying to use to prove that he's not invulnerable. Like they make that, uh, but there's a lot of cool playsets we could have had. The diner would yeah. have been a playset. Um, um, I would, I would probably want like space or something. The like, just... in, the interior of the Terror's uh, spider vehicle would have been really good. Yeah. From Arthur's bank account. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there, yeah, there's there's a there's a whole bunch of different places that would have been really, really neat to have. Yeah. Uh, you got anything else? Uh, nope. Okay. That's about it. Well, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed our overview of the Tick animated series, and we'll do more of these down the road with other stuff. Right now, we're watching through uh, not just Lost, but also the 90s X-Men show. And so we'll do, I don't know if we'll do seasons on that or if we'll do a whole series overview. We'll have to talk about it that. It has like five seasons, right? Mm-hmm. Or like yeah, seven. It was on, and I think it's five, maybe six. It was on longer than this, and that gets more involved. I mean, that's pretty serialized, so we, we may want to go season to season, and I bet there's enough folks that would be interested in us talking about that, so, yeah. so we may do that. Uh, but yeah, I'll leave your comments if you've uh, seen some of the show, and let us know what you think about it. And in the meantime, we had a great time. Hope you did too. I'm Captain Lloyd. And I'm Jason. <laughs> we'll see you next time.